Hello and welcome to another Covert Shores chat. This one is going to be about open source intelligence and particularly a type attack on open source intelligence. Like my other chats, it's not scripted. Um, it probably shows already, but let's go on with it. I'm going to start with a story. The international incident occurred in the Baltic on November the 4th, 2021, between Denmark and Russia. Now, it all started when a Russian ship was seized in Denmark due to a dispute, a legal dispute in Canada. The Russians overreacted, you could say. They sent a warship which appeared off the Danish coast almost immediately. And we know it appeared there because it was visible on various ship tracking websites, which show the positions of all the ships in the world, essentially. Um, this one is marine traffic. I'm going to use them throughout. They're my go-to, but there are other ones as well. You've probably already guessed this from the title of the, uh, the talk. This AIS data that was showing us where the ship was, was fake. There's some sort of bad actor that has introduced false data to the system. The warship was not there. So this chat's going to be about that sort of falsifying of AIS. It's becoming more and more common um, as open source intelligence in general um, becomes more standard, used by more people for more purposes. It's only natural that it's being attacked in more ways by also by more people, probably. So we're going to talk about AIS and how that's been attacked. Firstly, what is AIS? You probably already know this if you come to this video, but I'm going to cover it very briefly. And don't worry, not going to go into too much detail. Ships broadcast their position so that other ships know where they are. This can reduce collisions. It's not meant to replace radars and a human on the bridge and those sorts of navigation uh, controls. But it does definitely contribute to maritime safety. And it's also used by a, a lot of other things, you know, insurance and so on. What they're broadcasting is useful. Obviously, they're broadcasting who they are. Um, there's a couple of internationally recognized identification numbers, the MMSI and the IMO. Um, they're two numbers you see in the AIS data. You also their position in latitude and longitude, where they're coming from, where they're going to, when they're going to arrive, how fast they're going, what direction they're going in, what they're carrying, what activity they're doing, and so on. And all this is codified and it depends on the exact type of ship and circumstances as to what the rules are, but the bigger the ship, the more they're broadcasting typically. And this is an honor system. There is a trust that the people inputting the data are doing it right. It's only as good as the inputs basically. And you have people on the bridge of ships inputting data and they make mistakes. Humans do, sometimes it's not their native language that they're working in. It's, it's inevitable. So there is some incorrect data out there, but we're going to talk about when that data is false and deliberately false. So AIS is a brilliant source of open source intelligence. You see here a screenshot of marine traffic just showing all the ships um, at various locations around the globe at a certain point in time. You can click on each ship and see who they are, where they're going and so on. So it is a brilliant system, but it can be attacked just as it was in the Baltic. The few uses of it though, before we go into how, um, from an open source intelligence perspective, it comes into its own when there is an incident, you know, when a ship blocks the Suez Canal or the ship crashes into another one and so on. People very quickly go and look at the AIS, not just the investigators, but also journalists and, and open source intelligence people. Another use case is in commodities trading, particularly oil, but you know any commercial commodities. If you're trading in those, you might want to know where ships are, what's you know how full they are, and so on. And there's there's a whole industry around that. Another use is fishing, salvage, and dredging, particularly illegal fishing or politically sensitive fishing. For example, Chinese fishing fleets that turn up off Ecuador or illegal salvage of war graves or dredging to make um, artificial islands and so on. 
Another use case is what we call dark ships, um, sanction busting, illegal legal movements, arms supply, things like that. The ships turn off their AIS and that is itself interesting and there's all sorts of efforts in that space. Myself, I'm more interested in surveys and spy ships. Um, survey ships are often dual use or rather the data that they're gathering is dual use and is relevant to submarine warfare and seabed warfare. So by analyzing the movement patterns of the survey ships, you can infer what sort of, you know, various things around the submarine games that are being played. The last one I'll mention is warships. In general, warships are exempt from having to broadcast AIS. However, they still use it sometimes, particularly in heavy traffic, to avoid uh, collisions and things, and in which case AIS can form a valuable complement to other sources um, in order to build a picture of ship movements, readiness, and so on. There are other uses, of course. A couple of examples of my own work. This is um, the AIS tracks of various Chinese survey vessels in the South China Sea. Um, that's the orangey red marks on the map. Um, I was helped by a company called the Intel Lab to prepare the map. The letters ABC and so on are the locations of um, Chinese uh, underwater drones that have turned up in other people's waters. Um, so interesting. Another example is an infamous ship from Russia called Yantar. This is a very impressive and interesting ship. She essentially is a spy ship, but described as a research ship. She has a habit of hovering over top of or near to internet cables and things like that, shipwrecks, uh, aircraft wrecks on the seafloor, for example. On the right, you've got an AIS track um simplified form but showing the pattern in a particular time and we can infer from that what she was doing you know whether she's um using submersibles or rovs or and so on you can find out more about her on my website hisun.com yanta really interesting boat last example i'll share is this one which is the indian ocean um Chinese survey vessels, you can see different patterns, different types of survey going on. I mean, even as I'm talking, there is a Chinese survey ship doing um, seismic survey. So under and un below the seafloor mapping of um, the Pakistan uh, area, just the other side of India. So I'm sure that will be in the news as well. But all this stuff is quite interesting. Today, though, we're going to talk about the attack on this type of data. The best example, um, the one that most people think of too, happened in the Black Sea this, earlier this year. It all started when a carrier battle group centered on the, the Royal Navy's HMS Queen Elizabeth, that's the ship in the middle there, the aircraft carrier. It entered the Mediterranean in June this year, part of a, a world tour. Quite soon, two of the ships that were escorting it, a British warship, HMS Defender, and a Dutch warship, uh, the Everston, peeled off and went into the Black Sea. And they went to visit various allies of the countries in the Black Sea. Here's a closer, better picture. Um, as they were going through the Bosphorus, um, the British ship on the left, the Dutch ship behind. A few days later, they pulled into their first main port uh, port stop. That was in Odessa in Ukraine. Um, this photograph was actually posted on HMS Defender's Twitter account. And it shows it's clearly Odessa. Where it gets exciting is that evening after it pulled into Odessa, the ships left Odessa and proceeded in an almost straight line to the Russian naval base at Sevastopol, uh, Crimea. In fact, to an anchorage just off the base before turning around and going back again. Um, this is quite a provocative move, sailing straight to Russian 
held territory, Russian naval base. Of course, you've guessed it. It didn't really happen. It's fake data in the system. It did, however, get a lot of people's attention. And for a time, it did seem like there was a, an international incident unfolding. We know that the ships didn't sail there because there is other uh, open source intelligence you can use that gives a pretty good, a pretty convincing um, picture. This is a publicly accessible webcam, which you could have looked at yourself live and or recorded. Um, it's showing the two warships. This is at 7.22 in the evening local time in Odessa. The, you can see the Dutch and the British warship. If you watched it overnight, the ships don't move. Here's some screenshots um, periodically. The next morning, they're still in the same place. They haven't moved. They didn't sail to Russia. So it's a case that we can use one type of open source intelligence to contradict and, and disprove another type of open source intelligence. So where was this fake AIS data introduced into the system? AIS is a relatively simple chain. The ship broadcasts its position, which is picked up by receivers, also picked up by other ships that are nearby. But these ground-based receivers, typically radio hams or something of that nature, take the data and they pass it on to an aggregator, um, such as marinetraffic.com or, or other ones, who are taking from many of these receivers. And they then publish a aggregate view, um, either back to ships or to users like you and I who are using their web browser or, or apps to view ships for whatever reason. And of course, the way it can be attacked, the most obvious way that people think of, and the one that nearly always the first one that's mentioned when I'm discussing with people, is that the ships in question could have knowingly or deliberately broadcast false data. This isn't particular to the ones in Ukraine. It could be in you know, any instance of a ship not being where its, its AIS says it should be. Alternatively, another ship may be faking being the first ship. So it, can, it could be the ship in question or another ship. You don't need a ship, though. You could just have the, the, the radio equipment and transmit your position um, from your car, for example. And the receiver picks it up. And because you've said your latitude and longitude is whatever it is, then it processes it that way. You can also um, hack the ship. There's, you know, there's a whole topic on that. In port, it might be more vulnerable. There's several ways you could do it. One interesting way would be phishing emails. Another would be to drive around, do what you'd call a war drive, and, and pick up the Wi-Fi aboard ships and get in that way. You could set up your own Wi-Fi in the port, which is conveniently poorly protected, and invite, as it were, the sailors on ships that are visiting to steal your Wi-Fi and get in that way. So you don't have to actually be another ship to, to attack in this way. But if all this seems too much risk, too many feet on the ground, you could attack from the from the receiver further up the process. The receiver themselves may be a bad actor and may be introducing false data. More realistically, perhaps, a third party might have hacked the, the receiver and be introducing the, the false data. You don't have to attack one or more of the receivers. You could just falsify being a receiver and trick the aggregator into accepting your data. If you're thinking really big, you could attack the aggregator. Alternatively, you could attack the user. I don't think this is happening in this case because only one or very few users would have reported the false data. But if you are, for example, trading commodities and using AIS intelligence or something like that, you may feel that this is a very important, a significant threat in your threat model. 
Now, the takeaway here is not the specifics of the different places where the process can be attacked, is rather that there are lots of places where it can be attacked. And I'm sure you can think of more that I haven't, so just add those to the comments. As a aggregator or an intelligence service with access to one or, or, or several of these parts of the, the process, you might be able to figure out where the false data was introduced. However, as a user, as an open source intelligence user particular, you're unlikely to be able to figure out where it was introduced. So it's all speculation. Should also mention sometimes the terrestrial or the land-based um, AIS stations are replaced by satellites. Just in the last few days, US Space Command has reported how frequently satellite companies are attacked with cyber. So the principle is the same. So with that, who introduced this false data? Well, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate too much. If you are into conspiracy theories or whatever, share them by all means in the comments. What I will say is this, though. Whoever did it made a certain amount of effort to make the AIS tracks very convincing. They were the realistic speed, realistic uh, locations and so on. I think they just plugged in a very simple route um, to another port. So not that much imagination, but they were thorough. And, and I think that suggests that it is not a prankster or someone who's not put a lot of thought into it. It's whoever's doing it wanted it to look very realistic at the time. But why care? If it is just a distraction at the time, it's really not a big deal. If it's just open source intelligence people getting excited and confused, you know, why should we care? Well, not always, but sometimes these types of situation are playing out on the world stage. You've got on the left Russian Ministry of Defense, um, Twitter in this case, uh, reports about the incidents that are related to that. And on the right BBC reporting on it, the AIS or the false AIS was not a major part of that drama, but it could have been. And it could be either then or in the future part of an organized misinformation campaign or influence campaign. And it's conceivable that it will play a part, some part in situations that may get out of hand. And I think therefore we should treat it very seriously. What actually happened back in the Black Sea? Well, a couple of days after the false AIS, the ship sailed in a pretty much straight route straight route from Odessa, where they'd been, to Georgia. They passed very close to Crimea, which is occupied by Russia and has a naval base there. They followed the laws of the sea and so on. Um, the Russians definitely saw it as provocation. They were on AIS. So they chose to broadcast on AIS. And fortunately, a satellite passed over and took a, uh, a strip of of imagery, which included the vessels. I think it was traveling from south to north, going by memory. And if you zoom in, it's a low, uh, low resolution satellite image from Sentinel, European Space Agency, but you can see individual ships and you can actually identify which ships they are, you know, which ones are Russian, which ones are Royal Navy, you know, Royal Netherlands Navy and so on, even aircraft. Um, there were actually more ships further south off this screenshot, um, and you can identify which one's which. Another quite different attack that's happening is GPS jamming um, and spoofing and that, how that affects AIS. And there's been reports of this in Shanghai. Now, if you're a fan of James Bond, you might recognize this as very similar to a certain plot. Actually, this really did happen. And here there's a blog, the Maritime Executive, that well worth reading. They've got some really good articles. They do mention AIS further down, and you can see at the bottom of the page here, but it's primarily about GPS jamming. What I think is happening is that 
ships do not manually type in their latitude and longitude constantly. Instead, they just plug to their navigation system, which is getting its location primarily from GPS. And so whatever comes in for the GPS is then just broadcast out as that is our position. So if you attack the GPS, then it manifests itself in the AIS. And it can look really remarkable. This is from another website called SkyTruth. They have a couple of really long reads, but really well-researched and interesting. Um, I think this picture is, is brilliant. It's very obvious what's, what's going on here. You've got the yellow ship is one particular ship. The red ones are other ships. No prizes for guessing where the people or organization that are jamming the GPS are sitting. Now, maybe because of that, or maybe because of other things such as sanction breaking or, or maybe other motivations, China is actually trying to restrict um, people seeing AIS in China. So that what we saw in Shanghai in the future, we might not be able to see it, or at least it'd be much harder to see. In essence, they're making it such that if you collect AIS data in China, it could be a criminal offense to then give that data to a Western aggregator, for example. You can speculate why they would want to do that. But it's not just China that's playing the GPS game. Russia is often accused of it. One example, and there's, there's a several locations. One example is this one. It's pretty cool. On the Black Sea, I just took a screenshot of where it is so the ships you know, don't pay attention to the, the ships from on marine traffic. But there is a palace where that circle was, or a dacha. It is alleged to be a, a residence of President Putin. He denies it. But from time to time, there is GPS um, interference in the area, which uh, can affect ships AIS. Potentially, it could be dangerous, of course. Okay, we're nearly done. But before we do, I'm just going to mention something that's pretty obvious. I see this all the time, so I think I'll share. When an incident happens or a ship becomes interesting, people flock to marine traffic and other sites and they look at the most recent AIS. At the bottom here, you can actually see when it was received. Sometimes if the ship turns off its AIS or has other issues, then the data could be quite old. Usually it's you know minutes or hours, but it can be days or weeks or months. And so always pay attention to the date of the AIS. AIS. Additionally, there's some extra really useful information here. You can see the ground station that provided that AIS data to marine traffic. I imagine they get the same data from several ground stations on a, in a normal circumstance, and they have to work out which one to report and so on. But you can click on that ground station tab and you get a summary of what's going on there. And I'm not making any accusations against this ground station. It just happens to be the one I screenshotted. Um, it looks credible, to be honest. The green dots and the blue squares show you where they are picking up ships. And you can see they're all pretty close. There's one or two green dots that are in questionable places, suggest something wrong is going on. However, um, broadly, you know, this is, the patterns look pretty credible. It might be errors or whatever. The interesting thing, of course, would be in some cases, the when AIS is being falsified, the ground stations that are reporting it may be further than normal from where it is supposedly occurring. So always check this if you think there's something iffy. It may give you some clues as to what's going on. Um, but as always with um, open source intelligence, don't be too quick to assume something is unusual or special unless you know what normal looks like. Okay, with that, I'll wrap up. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your time. As I said, it was unscripted. It, I'm sure it showed. If you liked it, please share it. Please leave comments and uh, please subscribe. Thank you again.